Today's episode is sponsored by my patrons on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please consider making a pledge yourself. The link to my Patreon is down in the description below. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bobby and I love movies. Well, most movies. Today, we are going to be talking about the Angry Birds film. This movie came out in May of 2016 and made $346 million. It is now the second highest grossing video game film of all time. Hooray! A movie about an iPhone fad from 2010 that is now paving the way for things like the Emoji Movie. Let's dig right in. So we open with an orchestral version of the Angry Birds theme song as Jason Sudeikis slash Red runs through the forest. Ow, 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 ow. Speak, swing, tail. This scene right here is a sign that there is going to be a shit ton of people just getting hit as a joke. Nothing else around the joke, just psh, you got hit. Ha <laughs> ha, it's so funny. This feels like a shittier version of that scene from Hot Rod. <laughs> Bottom feeder. Bottom feeder. Get it? Bottom? Good joke. A bit over. Why is the egg on the front porch of the house? Those are neglectful fucking parents. Why don't we just settle this out and say the cake's on you? This cake is on you! So this is the scene that's supposed to set up the idea that this character has severe anger issues, but he didn't actually do anything that extreme. If he had run around and started breaking stuff in the dude's house, that might have been interesting, but all he did is smush cake in a dude's face. He didn't feel like he had out of control anger issues. It's really interesting to have a character who can't control his rage, but right then he chose to smash the cake in that bird's face. If he had just freaked out and threw it, it'd be one thing, but they spent a solid 20 seconds setting it up as a joke. It wasn't an uncontrollable impulse, he just made a shitty decision. Also, he immediately snapped out of it while flying through the air on his mission to abort the baby bird. My bad. It's a boy. And that's how we start the movie. <laughs> Someone got hit. That's so funny. And another joke slap. Oh. All of the voice acting in this film feels so forced and on the nose. Every time someone moves their face, there is a sound effect. Every gulp, slurp, and grunt is in your face and loud. They just can't let the animation do its job. The whole world around these characters just feels dead, and every little thing they do is like, blink, blink! It's sound designed like a Lego animation on YouTube. So Red is summoned to bird court for accidentally breaking that egg, because that little bird, although it did not die, thinks that Red is his daddy. No, 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 no. This is actually a decently well put together scene. Uh, the Woodpecker Court cartoonist, the daddy joke, Kate McKinnon. This scene actually has something going for it. For about 20 seconds. We are a happy, happy bird community. They're, they're the happy, the happy birds. Ha happy, N not angry. Get it? I have no choice but to impose the maximum penalty allowed by the law. Anger management class. Oh, so the movie's set in Sweden. Pluck my life. Ugh, I am so looking forward to hearing a child scream pluck off at its parent in the middle of a target. That adult human being paid for the child to see this movie. They deserve it. Thank you. Ugh. Why does this motherfucker have teeth? No one else has teeth. I don't like this. Mm, nope. I really feel like the directors of this film did not believe in the animation at all. Like I said before, every single sound effect is just so there, but not in a good way. The things that have sound effects aren't things that build tone and make it feel like the scenes are alive. It's just the movements of the characters and the noises they make every time they move their head. It's so unnecessary and distracting. <laughs> um... That's the human equivalent of skin and hair. That's some Buffalo Bill shit. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. That's art. That's garbage. And that's... that. That's a bird orgy. Good luck explaining that one to your kids. But, I mean, again, you bought the ticket, so you kind of deserve this. Since Red destroyed that egg at the beginning of the film, he is sentenced to anger management and joins a free rage program. 
While at this program, he meets the supporting cast. The Yellowbird's backstory is told in the flashback that is a ripoff of the Quicksilver scene from X-Men. I'd save every day like a treasure and then... The Big Red Bird is apparently... a rapist? <laughs> They did say that the worst punishment they can legally give is anger management, so... And finally, we meet Bomb, who blows up all of the time. Ah, do it! No can do. I just went boom boom before class. Damn, Bomb, back at it again with the sexual innuendo. And have you done this before? Uh, yes, I have, but usually not for free. The sexual innuendos are non-stop in this film. The story, characters, and world they created are so basic and obviously geared towards the child-slash-minion-loving audience, so these jokes stand out like a sore thumb. They got infected, went untreated, damaged the host's body, and killed the person. And you're probably like, oh yeah, but what about all the innuendo in Disney movies? Sure, it's there, but it's not this blatantly fucking obvious. There's a new happiness exhibit at the Museum of Happiness! That I'm dying to see. Oh look, it's Josh Gad, playing the one Josh Gad character. But this time... He's really fast. After the free rage meeting, we have a scene that shows that Red is really cut off from people because of his anger issues. And as the scene is going, a limp biscuit song starts playing. Get over here! <laughs> there is a limp biscuit song playing in the background of a children's animated movie about birds. What is happening? Red goes back for a second meeting at the free rage group and is treated to some lit ass bars or if my name were judas would you ask me what my mood is in the middle of the class a boat captained by a rotund pig lands on the beach red and the rest of the group head down to the shoreline to see what's up uh, again in this universe why is there a speed limit for running he's running at his natural speed what i think he's really receiving is a special ability ticket it's all a metaphor for socialism open your eyes sheeple we call it Piggy Island. Oh my god. So, this mine character is a thing. He keeps popping up and going, Oh my god. And it's super funny because he's a mime and he's not supposed to talk. And they do it a bunch of times. It reminds me so much of that stupid little cat from Puss in Boots. Oh, oh, oh. So the pigs are invited to a dinner with the birds, and they put on a show to celebrate. The only reason this scene exists is to set up the prompts from the game that will be used later to hilariously break more things. The trampoline! Why is a trampoline and slingshot impressive to these birds? They have schools, jobs, speeding tickets, detailed dick butt orgy sculptures. The slingshot is literally sticks and rubber. You think the birds would have figured that out by now. So Red decides to search the pig ship with Josh Gad and they come across a few interesting items. The first being 50 shades of green. Did the horniest animators of all time make this? Oh, well, actually, no, that award would go to the animators of Food Fight. You want some? Oh yeah. <laughs> it warms my heart the way you love my raisins, tough guy. <laughs> Very strange. They think a slingshot is the most amazing thing ever, but cars are just... Very strange. Okay, movie. Okay. Bomb bounces on a trampoline until it breaks and he falls through, revealing hundreds of pigs beneath the floorboards. <laughs> There's more of them than we thought, which is, um... Uh... Mysterious and weird, am I right? You snuck onto their boat? That I, you know, I don't need a reward. Don't need it. Boo! Yeah, boo them! I hate when movies use movie logic where everyone but the lead is blind to reality and act like complete idiots. So many movies rely on that because without it, their poorly thought out ideas wouldn't be able to function. Watch. A, B, C. These creatures use the fucking English alphabet, but they're impressed by a slingshot. So the pig leader, played by Bill Hader, shows up to Red's next meeting and has a daydream about interspecies pedophilia. Enchanté. You look delicious, my dear. Hey, hello, excuse me, buddy. Those are fragile. 
Maybe you shouldn't pick them up, all right? Not yours. So here's the thing. Red is super normal. Everyone else in this world is absolutely insane. This film is trying to paint a picture of him being this crazy bird consumed by anger and pessimism, but he isn't. He cracks jokes and uses basic reasoning. He's the kind of bird that if I were a bird, I'd want to hang out with. Can't tell you how much I just hated saying that sentence, and I wrote it. And it's up to us to figure it out. Um... That afro is cultural appropriation? Hashtag triggered. Red and his friends decide to go on a quest to find the mighty eagle so he can tell them what to do about the pigs. As they embark on their journey, they do another one of those movie things where characters have a cohesive conversation, even though we're only seeing bits and pieces of different scenes. But in my head, I'm kind of imagining it's something more like a are they having the same conversation like 15 times? Do they really have nothing else to talk about? They don't really know each other. I mean, they've only been to a few AA meetings together. Get to know each other, folks. Calves are killing me. Ugh. This feels like a Casey Neistat vlog. So the quest to find the mighty eagle is three minutes long. Three minutes long. Oh, oh, wow. We just spent the past 42 minutes listening to sexual innuendos, bird puns, and sitting in an anger management class. We could have been joining these characters on this epic action-filled quest to find the mighty eagle. I love this movie. <sighs> this joke never ends. See? Ah. Uh... See? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. See? Oh. It won't stop. Mm -hmm. no. Bulls. Ugh. Horrible turn of events. Bulls, stop. Ooh. So it turns out the Mighty Eagle is really lame, and this happens. <laughs> yeah! So he's kind of a wackadoodle. I can't fully explain how strange the audio design is in this film. Sound mixing is one of the most important aspects of animation, and they completely neglected it. It's mixed like a sitcom. There's no cinematic quality to it whatsoever. No room tone, no ambience, no background noise, unless it's part of a joke or a shitty pop song. And even the pop songs are put super low in the mix where you can barely hear them. So Red looks through Mighty Eagle's binoculars and realizes that the pig's plan is to steal all of the eggs and blow up the entire town. So they run down the mountain directly directly into a Michael Bay movie. Oh man! Shit just got real. Josh Gad runs to warn the town about the pig's evil plan and ends up eating pigs in a blanket at the big pig party. Pigs in a blanket that the pigs are serving. That is called cannibalism, my dear children. Red and Bomb aren't really able to stop the pigs whatsoever, so the pigs destroy the entire town and get away with the eggs. We need a leader. What do we do now? Do? Wait a minute. I'm not a leader. Okay, pigs stole our kids. That sucks. Ladies, get busy! We're gonna be laying some eggs tonight! No. Okay, this one isn't even innuendo. He's just blatantly saying it's time to fuck. And immediately following that, we have another pedophile joke. Have you ever stolen anyone's children? <laughs> I mean, you look like you would. This is out of control. So the birds build a boat, find the pig castle, and start throwing themselves at it with the the slingshot. This sounds so stupid when I'm saying it, and somehow when you watch it, it's even stupider. I guess I should have known it was going to end up here, you know, with this being the entire game this $73 million film is based off of, but for some reason, it still surprised me that they stooped this slow. What is that? Even the pigs are eating hot dogs. This is a tribe of pedophilic cannibals with mental retardation that the birds are going up against. That sounds like a Wes Craven film, not a DreamWorks knockoff. Other than Bomb and Josh Gad, there was never a point in this movie where they set up that the birds have different abilities. Some of them kind of make sense, like the toucan being able to be a boomerang. Like, that's like, okay, I could believe that. But the one teacher can just shoot fireballs out of her asshole with no explanation. Plus, they're just like, hey, let's catapult our bodies into the skyscrapers. There was no setup like, hmm, I wonder what we should do to fight them. It was just immediately slingshot, throw birds at the fucking skyscrapers. None of this was set up at all. So the battle goes on and on. They 
keep launching birds and those birds break things. Red is running around the castle looking for the eggs when he comes across a Shining reference. Red rum. Remember earlier when I said that that scene was ripping off the Quicksilver scene? I was wrong. This scene is ripping off the Quicksilver scene. I'll be taking that! Whoa, 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 whoa. Homicide. Just straight up homicide. PG movie. Homicide. During this entire fight, Mighty Eagle is trying to fly to help them after previously turning them away, but it falls to what seems like his death before appearing a few minutes later at the battle. The problem, well, a problem with this is that there is no Gandalf the White moment. Or if you want to be even more exact, there's no the Eagles moment. He just kind of shows up and helps them. No triumphant or redemptive moment whatsoever. The eagle saves all the eggs but one, and Red tries to keep it safe from Bill Hader. They fight until they end up under the pig city, which is built on a mine filled to the brim with dynamite. Red grabs the egg from Bill, hides under a huge golden pot, and has to start dealing with the fact that he is responsible for the genocide of an entire people. I don't want to just brush over this. Red is responsible for that dynamite being lit and murdering thousands of pigs and the birds that were launched into the city. So much collateral damage. Holy shit. That was actual genocide in a children's movie. Okay, that was kind of funny. And finally, the movie ends with a song only paralleled in creepiness by Samara in The Ring. Bravery, humility, angry. Mighty, mighty red, you. This is a really bad movie disguised as a stupid kids movie. There are way too many sexual innuendos and references for this to be a movie just aimed at children. And if it's not just aimed at children, it's a terrible film. It is one of the only animations I've ever seen that I would classify as miserable to watch. The animation looks halfway done on about a third of the movie, the voice actors were poorly cast, and the sound design was a mess, the plot was incredibly thin and had no heart, and the amount of sexual innuendos was inconceivable. I would not recommend this movie to anyone, ever. It is a blatant cash grab that obviously and unfortunately worked. The sequel is already in the works. Okay guys, I guess that's it. Thank you so much for checking this video out. I really hope you enjoyed it. You can hit me up on Twitter at TheBobbyBurns and Instagram at BobbyBurnsOfficial. My Patreon is down in the description below and my PO Box is right here on the screen and also down in the description. I really hope you enjoyed this video format. I'm gonna try to start doing more of these. I had a blast making this video and I really hope that comes through. I guess I'll see you later guys. Peace out. Shoo.